the convening of the 2011 year for the Board of Supervisors. Right now, I would like to introduce the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department Color Guard, and I ask that you all that are seated rise. All right, it's, it's now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, and we're very honored and pleasured to, pleasure to um, invite Sean Thompson to, um, to be our keynote speaker. We're, we're very much looking forward to what you have to say today, Sean. Uh, Sean Thompson, for those of you who don't know, is a world surfing champion. He has been listed as one of the 25 most influential surfers of the century as well as one of the 10 greatest surfers of all time. He is a business finance graduate of the University of Natal in Durban, South Africa, and is the founder of two $30 million apparel companies. He's the author of the best-selling book, Surfer's Code, 12 Simple Lessons for Riding Through Life, and the producer of the award-winning documentary film, Bustin' Down the Door. Thompson is a businessman and environmentalist who resides in Santa Barbara with his wife Carla and young son Luke. He is an inspirational speaker for corporations, schools, and universities, and he's currently working on a new book, film, and apparel projects. He is a board member and ambassador for the Surfrider Foundation, the world's largest environmental group dedicated to protecting the world's ocean, waves, and beaches. Please join me in welcoming Sean Thompson. Well, Honorable Board of Supervisors, elected officials and staff, thank you so much for the privilege of addressing you all today. We live in a challenging sea. And our attitude towards those challenges defines who we are and how we live our lives. Recession, deficit, depression, partisanship. Our attitude about the present defines our future. Our attitude about the future defines the present. Our attitude defines how we see the world and how the world sees us. Our attitude is the light that can show us the way on a journey from where we are to where we want to be. It's a fundamental choice for all of us positive or negative, optimism or pessimism, hope or despair, light or darkness. It is a simple choice. It's a choice to be made by everyone in this room. And this choice can change us and change our lives and change the world all around us. This is a story of a journey, my journey, a story of despair and hope, a journey from heartbreak to happiness, a journey from the dark into the light. I hope you enjoy my little story. For 16 years through the 1970s and 1980s, I was a pro surfer. I actually made my living by going surfing. How about that? <laughs> and I was pretty good at it too. I actually made it a career. My specialty was tube riding. It represents the absolute essence of surfing. And this picture here gives you an idea of what tube riding is all about. It's a feeling of pure exhilaration and freedom. Time is expanded. Reality unfolds in slow motion. The past is just behind you, the present is right between your feet. Racing beneath your board and the future is just ahead, just out of reach, and you're riding for the light, always riding for the light. My favorite spot along the California coast is Hammond's Reef, a secluded beach about a mile away from where I live. It was home to the Shumash people hundreds and hundreds of years ago. My son Matthew and I used to love going surfing there, and together we had some great days. In the water sometimes he'd come up to me, sit next to me, and throw, throw his arm around my shoulder, while well, we waited for a wave, it was a great feeling for a dad. It's a lovely beach, a small bay, a peaceful refuge from the business of life. The whole atmosphere at Hammonds is calming. On a beautiful California day, the sun sparkles across the ocean like a field of glittering diamonds. Sparkle factor is what us surfers call it. One winter morning, Matthew and I went down to check the surf. There's a beach where we'd sit together and check out the action, and we'd stash our surfboard wax at a little spot in the bushes that grew down to the cobblestones surrounding the beach. On this particular day, there was no surf. Matthew said, let's go and visit the memorial. This is the beautiful beach at Hammond's Reef. In front of Hammond's, bordered by expensive homes, is a beautiful meadow, Shalawa Meadow. And at the eastern edge of the meadow is a memorial erected by the Shumash and decorated with dolphin figurines. So we walked along the path to the meadow and went to the memorial. 
At the base of the memorial, people had left shells, bits of driftwood, pictures, and other offerings. On the memorial is a profound and powerful inscription. The sacredness of the land lies in the mind of its people. This land is dedicated to the spirit and memory of the ancestors and their children. We stood there for a few minutes soaking in the atmosphere. The Shumash had a settlement right here hundreds of years ago, living off the land and the sea. Surrounded by high-end homes in our ultra-modern society, there was a feeling of history, a connection to the past and to the land. We walked down the beach together, and I could see a plan was percolating in my beautiful son's head. Come on, Dad, help me. On this stretch of beach, just the two of us, no one else around, he started to build this enormous circle of stones. We made one large circle, and inside that circle, we made a second circle, dragging the stones around the beach. And inside that second circle, we then made a third. So finally, we had three concentric circles of cobblestones on the beach. Then Matthew made a pathway through the three circles, and inside the innermost circle, he dropped two large flat stones. One was to be a seat for me, and another a seat for him. He then scampered off down the beach and came back with a large stick. On top of the stick, he had tied some kelp and attached a feather. He had me sit down in the center of the three circles on my rock, and he sat directly across from me on his. What this is, Dada, he explained, is a sacred story circle. And this, he said, holding the stick is the sacred story stick. If you're holding the stick, you can tell a story. And when you're finished, you give me this tick, and I'll tell you a story. So we sat down inside the circle of stones on the two seats on an empty beach at Hammonds and just told each other stories. It was just the two of us in our own little world inside the sacred story circle. It was a magical, magical moment. In 2006, life was good for the Thompsons. My wife and I had sold our apparel company Solitude that we started in 1998 to Oxford, a billion dollar publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. They'd set up a new design studio for us in Montecito and put us on a three year contract. We sold our company and the company did a big deal with J.C. Penney's, an enormous deal, a deal worth tens and tens of millions of dollars. At the time, our son Matthew was having some challenges at school, and we decided to have him reconnect with our homeland and attend my old school, Clifton, in South Africa for a few months. Carl and Matthew made the long trip together, and within a month he was doing great, excelling at my old private school. I was so proud of him. On the 24th of April of 2006, at 9 a.m., I phoned. Matthew picked up the phone. Carl and I were scheduled to have a three-way business call conference scheduled with the headquarters in New York. It felt like Matthew was sitting right next to me. Hey, Dad, I want to read you something. He then read me a beautiful essay. And I asked him who wrote it. I did, Dad. He was so proud of this beautiful essay that he'd written about the essence of the surfing experience. And four words that he wrote really struck me. The light shines ahead. The light shines ahead. Carla jumped on the line and we had to stop the call. I love you, Dada. I love you too, Matthew. I was going down to South Africa in two weeks to visit my family. A Japanese film crew came down to the studio and picked me up. They'd flown out to interview me and wanted to do some pics. Of course, I took them down to Hammond's. It was a magnificent spring day and they interviewed me on the beach. I looked out to the ocean and something just didn't feel right. It is too perfect, I thought. Walking back on the path, I had a profound sense of unease. Something just didn't feel right. Something felt very, very wrong. I stopped under a large eucalyptus tree that lines the trail, and the interviewer stopped with me. There's nothing more important than a positive attitude, I said to him. Words just popped into my head. Those words formed a core belief, but the words sounded loud and forced to me. We got in the car, and my cell phone rang. It was my wife, Carla. Matthew was dead. But how is that possible? I'd just been speaking to him. Carla was destroyed. I was destroyed. How is that possible? He was playing a risky game that had deadly consequences. Our lives were shattered in a moment. My friends rallied, got me a passport, and put me on a plane. It was a harrowing trip back to South Africa. I was in a state of disbelief, and my only thought was to save my wife. My beautiful son was gone, and I knew I was close to losing my wife as well. On my arrival, Carla had to be admitted to a psych care ward, and I really didn't think she was going to make it. During her second week in hospital, a friend came to visit. I have a message from Matthew. One bolt of lightning hit that hospital. 
One clap of thunder out of a cloudless sky. I have a message from Matthew, he said. He said he made a mistake and wants you to forgive him. What he did was an accident. One bolt of lightning. Did it make it easier to accept? No. But it did give us a connection to the afterlife. That our son on earth and our life on earth is not all we have. Knowing that Matthew was still with us in spirit gave us both the strength to move forward. And that moment of light, that moment of lightning, was a turning point. I reread the essay Matthew had read to me on the day he died. The light shines ahead. The light shines ahead. Those words resonated deeply with me and do so every day. Life was very hard for both of us, but each day made the pain a little less severe and my wife and I grew closer. It was like two trees had fallen in a storm and in the process of falling, toppled against one another and stayed up and then grew together ever closer. Through all the pain, we did have the hope that one day we would be a family again. We missed being a family. On the 25th of August, we received a phone call out of the blue that would change our lives. A baby boy had been born just before midnight the previous day. Were we interested in adopting? We both immediately said yes. The baby was born a month premature. The date of birth was supposed to have been the 25th of September. The 25th of September, my wife said, that was Matthew's birthday. Carla said, this is our baby. This is a sign from God. We got another call back immediately telling us she had planned to call the baby Matthew. We knew the baby had to be ours now. The next morning she made her decision and we had our baby. We drove up to the hospital immediately in a state of delirious happiness. The light shining ahead of us. We arrived at the hospital and were told to proceed directly to the nursery before meeting the woman who would share the precious gift of her child. We went up to her room and walked in and met her for the first time and looked at her lying on her bed like an angel because that's what she was. She was our angel, come to share a gift from God. I looked at her and we all hugged together and all felt right with our lives. We were surrounded by this incredible warmth and emotion. She asked if our baby was beautiful and we said he was. And we thanked her for her trust and the amazing gift of our child for sharing with us what was most precious to her. I looked at her lying on the bed and I felt like I was looking at my wife's twin sister. The resemblance was uncanny and quite took my breath away and Carla's as well. We all hugged and left. She asked us the baby's name because she wanted him to be born with our name. We like Luke, we said. It just feels right. That day on the drive home, Carla and I were overjoyed. Let's check what Luke means. Matthew's name meant gift from God. Luke's name means light or bringer of light. Luke is the bringer of light. He has brought the light to us again, just like Matthew wrote. The light shines ahead. The light shines ahead. <laughs> my wife and I have been blessed with Luke. We have found our way through the darkness and into the light. And my son's words help me survive. There's a lot of goodness in this world. There's a lot of goodness all around us. And we all have this light inside of us. And this light shines through to the world and everyone around us in our attitude. It is up to each and every one of us whether we wish to shine this light on the road ahead and illuminate the way forward towards a better future for all of us. I'd like all of us here to consider the simple question. What is your attitude? It is an answer, a choice, without any shades of gray, without nuance, without complexity, light or darkness, positive or negative. This I know. Thank you. Thank you.